Hi, and welcome to Race Day Nation. I'm Rob D'Amico alongside Michelle Rahal. Back this week, uh, unseen circumstances last week with the race at Pocono with uh, somebody going to victory lane and not winning the race. We'll get into that here in a second. The show is presented by rhino.co. Sell fast and list for free on Rhino Classified. So visit rhino.co. And uh, we appreciate those guys coming on board. Uh, but we do have some, uh, uh, we got some updated news coming out of what happened last week at Pocono. Uh, Pocono having the issue with uh, Denny Hamlin going to victory lane, enjoying it all, three fingers up in the air. Hey, look at me, I got this. Uh, and then uh, what happens? He gets disqualified. And, uh, you know, it hasn't happened in like 50 years in NASCAR. So, uh, here we are. They took a win away, and I did some see some pictures. I don't know if you saw this. Do you see them online, by the way? Where no, I didn't. You talking the about split? the intake part? I might, yeah, so I, I have might the, have seen that. So they have the yeah. splitter at the bottom, and then they have the side of the fascia, and then there's this little triangle piece that looked like it was in there. I can't see how it does that much to take a win away, well, but here we are. Think about it. I mean, an F1, just the time. Of arrow change difference, and in these cars, you know, the new gen car, this this next gen or whatever they're calling it, I mean, it's probably pretty aero dependent. It it looks that way. So any type, you know, alteration of the skirts or you know, a volance up front could make a huge. And the rules are the rules, by the way. Yeah, so it was third place, uh, I guess, now winner. So it was third place, moves up to the win, which was Chase Elliott. He didn't find out about it until he was already on the plane heading home with his dad, uh, thinking about, okay, I finished third. What can I do next? I actually have him here talking about that. Listen to this. My dad and I had already had us flying home, and obviously didn't have any cell phone service. So, uh, yeah, when when we landed and, and whatnot, um, I had a – you know, I had a – couple messages um kind of filled me out what was going on so yeah i was just surprised um by that you know obviously something that i don't really ever recall happening throughout um the time that i've watched nascar at least in the cup series i've certainly been uh, a part of um some situations like this over the course of my my short track racing career so i know it happens um you know and it's not something that um is a complete shock, I guess, in other types of racing, but certainly on the cup side, not something that we're, we're accustomed to seeing. <laughs> he can shave his mustache. <laughs> it, it is a bad mustache. I'll give it's you that. It's a man. bad mustache, man. He just, you know, he yeah, some of the... anything like his father, but the mustache thing, I mean, that's 70s porn star stuff. It is real bad. It's really uh, bad. Not that is... I know what a 70s porn star would look like. Oh, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, though, here he is, a kid, you know, he gets the win. Congratulations to him. When I look at him, I see, you know, and he's down here in the in the picture. Uh, yeah. They had him on a Zoom call, and he was trying to get the logo in and all that stuff. Yeah. I get it. But he looks like a – you remember the old game, the Wii games, and they had those, like, fake little balloon-headed people? He kind of looks <laughs> like that in that picture. Dude, that's way ahead of him. That's way behind <laughs> me. I'm, I'm... – we whoa woo i have no ouija that i remember oh there you go you're going way back on that one all right so he gets the win they they move on they go on uh that was a really bad weekend if you were the leader of any race the second uh race race number two of the indycar series they had joseph newgarden crash out as the uh, as the leader yeah. in the f1 series leclerc did the same thing crashed out as the leader and uh, just wasn't a and with Pocono with uh, Denny Hamlin, it uh, wasn't a great weekend for leaders at the time of the race. And unfortunately, those guys uh, did not finish. And we were kind of joking um, off air about the Leclerc stuff. But Ferrari again this week, what a huge screw up these guys are doing. It's 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 continuous. I mean, they have become Mattia Bonotto has become the Barney Fife of formula one put one bullet in his damn pocket and he's going to screw it up he screwed it up i don't care what he says because his excuse is the car was bad 
Yeah. Well, who the hell made the car? Yeah. Who put this strategy in motion? It didn't just come out of thin air, but to throw the Claire on hard tires, you know, hoping that they'll come in within 10 laps yeah. in a race this close, where all of a sudden you've got Mercedes as players, real players. Oh, looks strong. What an idiot. I mean, all right, we're going to we're going to take a break here. We're going to talk about F1 coming up in our next segment. So stick around for Michelle Rayo and Rob D'Amico. This is Race Day Nation. Welcome back to Race Day Nation. Rob D'Amico, Michelle Rayo, our website, racedaynation.com. Find us on the web, our podcasts, our videos. All yeah. that stuff is up there, plus the latest news and rumors uh, from partners like tobychristie.com. Uh, we got Racer uh, up there as well, Motorsport all their uh, RSS feeds all in one spot for you. So hope you enjoy that. Come by. Also join our newsletter, racedaynation.com, for all that information. All right, Michelle, we had a great weekend. Uh, some exciting racing going on. We had F1 at the, the Hungarian GP. Uh, and I don't think that we saw this one playing out the way we did no. after last week's uh, fa fiasco with Ferrari. And that should be their new, new name it's been bizarre over there. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if Matias is trying either. to get trying to get fired. I I don't know, but somebody soon is going to be held responsible. Now, this is not Leclerc's fault. I mean, how many races now? Four races that Leclerc should have won, and through strategy or the lack thereof, it's cost him a champ a world championship. And somebody's, I mean, you know, the ax has got to fall on somebody's neck. And trust Agreed. me, it's going to be Matias. I mean, it's got to be. The guy's just, you can't sit there and make excuses like it's a, you know, the car was bad. The car wasn't quite what we wanted. All right. Well, you should have taken that into consideration when you were halfway through the damn race. And instead of throwing hard tires on the car like he did, like they did. Uh, and hoping that those tires were going to come in in 10 laps, which they did not, obviously. No. I mean, he got smoked. And, you know, the guy's got every right to be angry, but Verstappen played this like a fiddle. Who qualified 10th, uh, by the way. Huh? Who qualified 10th, by the way. He started in 10th place. And spun the car early in the race. He spun and still won. Yes. Uh, it, it was just a, a brilliant strategy, and... You know, Verstappen is one of those guys that just keeps the pressure on, 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 and he never lets up. And you got to hand it to Mercedes now. All of a sudden, you've got Lewis Hamilton popping out and saying, I think we've got a car that we can win with. And when, when somebody like Hamilton says that, that's projecting to me, after the summer break, if we see the same thing, don't expect Hamilton reti to retire next year. Yeah, it's possible. There's yeah. no doubt. All right. So let's do the rundown here of the results from the Hungarian GP. We mentioned it, Max, Max Verstappen getting the win there. Congratulations. Lewis Hamilton and George Russell on the podium as well. The exact same finishing order as they did last week. Uh, um, and going back uh, when uh, Ferrari made their mistakes there, Carlos Saints, Sergio Perez, Charles Leclerc, Lando Norris, Fernando Alonso, Esteban Ocon, and Sebastian Vettel round out the top 10 and again you mentioned uh what we're seeing right now with these guys over at mercedes now this is a track that kind of fit what mercedes does a little bit slower wasn't as fast as last week a little bit slower here but this was a track that they were able to come out and make some noise and george russell getting the the pole uh just fantastic i think those guys were very excited just to see that and the level that they were able to bring during qualifying. And it, they had some wet conditions. There was some rain earlier. They yeah. were able to get qualifying in Q1, Q2, and then Q3 was pretty dry. Um, but they made some noise at the beginning, and uh, here they are sitting on the podium again for the second time this season, only the second time this season. Well, they fought for it. I mean, you've got to hand it to them. They did fight for the positions that they have. But Ferrari handed it to him. And um, and by the way, let's not forget, Sebastian Vettel announced his retirement. That's right. Um, this year, he's going to retire after the season's over with. And that was quite a, uh, at some point, you know, we'll, we should probably put up on our website the statement that he made. Because 
whether you love his activism or you hate it or you just are indifferent, it was uh, it was a very passionate uh, announcement uh, and very uh, very adroit. He, he really did a hell of a job in delivering that message of retirement. And then hats off to him. What a great driver. What a great ambassador for the sport. I, I agree. And and listen, you know, some speculations that were. He kind of made a statement a couple of weeks ago when he drove his car with the zero emissions or whatever it was that he yeah. was doing on the track. And he says, hey, you guys should be doing this. There's no reason we did it to a retro fit on an old F1 car. Why can't you guys do that? And I think that, you know, he, exactly wanted to get, he literally wants to go back to V12s and run on the sustainable fuel that he's that they've created. Yeah, I'm all for it, baby. You heard the V, you heard the tens, and you heard the eights. Yeah, you heard what those sound like. Yep. My God, the V, the V twelves would just be beyond beautiful. Let me run down points here real quick before we have to take our break. Max Verstappen with a 258 point um, uh, total on his points. Charles Leclerc only 178. You can see it here. Start and hurt these guys. Sergio Perez. And then you go all the way back to Fernando Alonso there with 41 points. But, man, Ferrari is really screwing themselves. They're the ones that need this break more than anybody. And they came out firing on all cannons, and they still can't get it done now. Uh, it's, it just blows my mind. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to recap the truck race. They're in their playoffs, so we're going to talk about all that coming up next right here on Race Day Nation. Welcome back to Race Day Nation. Rob D'Amico, Michelle Ray Hall. The show is presented by rhino.co. Sell fast, and all you got to do is get your uh, um, car up on uh, rhino.co, and it's all right there for you. You know, Michelle and I have been kind of joke, Wait. half joking, but I'm up there looking for cars because I'm very interested. Porsche, baby. I want to I want a C4S. That's Porsche, right. That I can modify. Yeah. That's all right. Cool. Let's uh, get into the truck race. They were at IRP this weekend, uh, racing out there. Some great racing. That's a wonderful short track. I, it is. Know, I'm glad it they is. brought that back, put it on the schedule. But that's been a, a staple in Indy for a very long time. Uh, and uh, the trucks put on one hell of a show. There's a lot of action there because this is their first race into their playoffs. And, uh, again, congratulations uh, goes out to um, – we had – that's not the trucks. My bad. What do I got here? Here we go. Grant Infinger ended up winning the race. Congratulations to him. Ben Rhodes, uh, Zane Smith, Stuart Friesen, Corey Heim, Tyler Ankrum. Uh, it was Lane Riggs. And I, it must be a local guy, Lane Riggs. That one doesn't seem very familiar to me. Ty no, me What's that? Does not seem familiar to me either. Yeah. Matt Crafton and John Hunter Nemechek round out your top 10 there. So congratulations to all those guys. But again, in finger getting the victory lane. Uh, and this is a guy that's kind of struggled a little bit getting into the playoffs, but was able to make some noise there at the end and finally you know, got in. And now this is exactly what you want because now you're sitting there with a win. You're guaranteed yeah. to move on to the next segment, which yeah. that's exactly the position you want to be in. Every time you start one of those new segments, is run up there, get that win, so it carries you through no matter what happens at the next two races. Uh, so let's take a look at the points right now. Zane Smith is your points leader with 2,079. 14 points behind him is Ben Rhodes. Grin Enfinger obviously moves up to 20 sec uh, 22 points behind uh, Rhodes. Then it's Stuart Friesen, John Hunter Nemechek. Uh, last week's winner, Chandler Smith, Ty Majetsky, Carson Hosovar, Matt Crafton, and Kristen Eckes are in the top 10 as they sit right now in uh, the uh, truck points. So congratulations to those guys. And, uh, I'm, I, you know, they put on a good show. These guys, yeah, even mean, though they're the young and up-and-coming guys, you get these trucks out there. They were battling. I mean, they were really going at it on, on track. I ran a two-truck team, and we ran IRP, but I also ran a uh, – uh, ff 2000 team uh and we we race there as well and it's uh it's it's quite a track to navigate but uh the racing is excellent it's a great racetrack and i'm glad they've got it you know on the schedule for at least these cars 
because uh, you know the indy cars used to uh before the indy 500 it was the mini indy 500 with or the mini 500 with you know the formula ford 2000s running uh at that track so it was what, pretty cool i thought so with those open wheels on a track like that how did that go i mean it uh, well i know there's not as, as much power no but you know it's momentum it's all about momentum on a track like that and uh uh sort of like phoenix i mean i i don't recall there being too many crashes our friend bo barfield was in that uh in those races as well uh my guy jonathan clues uh he was in there and i saw him the other day he says hello by the way and and (laughs) he's done well for himself yes he has i don't think we won that race but we came close i think lance nork might have Uh, but nonetheless uh it in the truck series uh that was one of the first you know small tracks uh, that we ran other than the, the very first one, which was Seattle or somewhere in Portland. Yeah. Damn if I can remember. It was a long time ago, son. <laughs> you can't remember yesterday. That's I can't, yeah. Five minutes ago. What the hell happened? Uh, I did that the other day. I was, uh, what was I doing? Oh, I took some medication and, and I, not even 10 minutes later, I go, I take that stuff. I don't remember. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm, like, oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> All right, uh, let's take a break here. I'm going to break early because we're going to come back and talk Xfinity because uh, uh, AJ Allmendinger, who won the race, I don't know if you saw him get out of the car today at the Cup race at the end of that thing. No, I didn't. poor guy must have had almost a like a little mini heat stroke. He got out of the car and just kind of collapsed onto the wall. They were throwing water all over him, pouring it down his suit. I mean, he was in bad shape today. I I actually felt bad for him. So I don't know if he won yesterday and may have partied a little bit too much before today's race. Maybe. Yeah. So we'll get into all that coming up next right here on Race Day Nation. Welcome back to Race Day Nation. I'm Rob D'Amico alongside Michelle Ray Hall. We were talking Xfinity. We were talking about partying after a win. I'm just speculating that might have happened a little bit. Didn't get all the fluids back in your system for the race on Sunday, and he got out of the car. We we're talking about AJ Allmendinger, but uh, great run on his part. They, I, I absolutely love watching these cars on the uh, road course at Indy. I think this is a really special place, and that that road course really adds a nice little element of, you know, there's tight corners, slower corners, there's longer speedway parts of the track. I I think I love coming here and being on that road course better than I like the oval with the Brickyard when it ran the Brickyard. Yeah, me too. Um, First Formula One race you ever saw was on that road course. That is correct. And I'll never forget your face coming out of that, coming out of the car. I was was so good looking. Straight to the fence, man. Oh, you had first, your fingers locked in the in the in the anchor locking, just watching. I, I don't think you could believe how loud and how fast they actually were. So that's what it got me at first. I'm like, listen to these things. My God. So I went I up know. to the fence and then I just see this blur. Zing, and I was like, wow. And I know. I'm, we we were standing down by the corner and I'm like, that car doesn't look like it's gonna make it. And sure enough, man, they the brake hard, they're in the corner, the grip. I mean, it was so impressive. Yeah. It is on another level than IndyCar, NASCAR, all that stuff. And even Imps is making an announcement, which we'll get into a little bit later, about running back at the Brickyard uh, with the road course. So uh, great stuff at that road course. I absolutely great track. Yeah. I mean, but on the cool, on the falling out of the car, you know, with the heat stroke, I mean, they have cool suits, right? I mean, yeah. they've got cool vests and things like that. Well, if those break, which has happened to me in Phoenix, it was 100 and 108 degrees outside. Inside the car was a sauna. Well, the cool suit, the 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 refrigeration unit, which was nothing more than a cooler of ice that was pumping every 30 seconds, it broke. And I thought I was going to die. It was so hot in that car. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And it was one of the Nissans, so it was closed, tin top. And, man, it was hot. I can understand how he might fall out the car. My teammate, Lee Mueller, only made 10 laps, and his heart started to give him some palpitations, so he had oh, to get out. 
Very dangerous. Yeah. All right. So let's look at the uh, Xfinity results. It was uh, AJ Allmendinger. As I mentioned, you had some cup guys in there. Alex Bowman was in there. Uh, Justin Allgaier, Ross Chastain, Chase Briscoe, uh, Riley Herbst, Sam Mayer, Ty Gibbs, uh, Austin Hill, and Noah Gregston round out the top 10. But as, as I mentioned, you know, kissing the bricks, really something cool. And when you have the opportunity, I don't care who you are, and you can get to uh, a victory here at the uh, at Indy. It's a special moment. I it's just it's always cool. Look at his face. I mean, he's he's had a blast. He's he's loving every minute of this. There's no doubt. Um, but you know, it's just when you can get to victory lane on a moment at, on. You know, listen. You get the victory lane. We heard Chase earlier in the show mention about ah, it's not the way you want to get a victory. I don't care how I got the victory. I want the victory. <laughs> You can just hear Penske or one of the race officials going, no tongues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I wouldn't put it past AJ, to be I, honest with you. <laughs> I, that's what I was in reference to. He looked like he was going for it. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to make the best of this. That was a long, this. long girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's actually pretty good. It's All good. right. I do, I do have AJ in the uh, press box after the race talking about his win here. Anytime he can win. Anytime he can win. That- IMS and kiss those bricks and, you know, be on top of the pagoda and oh, I, no, no, I don't no. care if it's cup race, <laughs> Xfinity race, any car race, IMSA race, I don't know, summer shootout out here. I don't, anytime you win at Indy, it's, it's a big deal, at least for me. It's, this place is special. I, I love this racetrack and uh, I thought, you know, it's kind of funny because last year I thought we gave the Xfinity race away and, and um, you know, through the grace of God, we, we got an opportunity in the cup race to go win the race. Um, but I felt like, you know, we deserved to come out here and win this race. And we had a, a really good car, uh, bad first pit stop. Uh, but the guys rebounded the last two and, and did a really good job and um, just kind of had to pace myself. We, we had a lot of outright speed. Uh, I knew Bowman was, was decent on the long run, so I pushed pretty hard early there to just try to build a gap so I could kind of pace myself. And, um, and then at the end, just pray for no yellows. <laughs> well, I, I like a guy to go, yeah, I love winning here. This is great. Got the checkered flag, had a great makeout session. <laughs> but hey, we'll take a look at the uh, IndyCar playoff picture right now because with this, I think it's his third win. Uh, that puts, uh, um, what am I looking at here? This is the Xfinity series. Yeah. So you have Almendinger who moves down, uh, moves up to fourth, but it's Ty Gibbs who still, if the playoffs were to start today, See, A.J. Allmendinger is the points leader, the regular season points leader. But we're looking at the playoff pitcher here, and it was uh, Ty Gibbs, Noah Gregston, Justin Allgaier, A.J. Allmendinger, uh, Josh Berry, and then you get all the way down to about 12th where Ryan Seek is in the playoffs and just outside 50 points out is Sheldon Creed, uh, Anthony Alfredo, Brandon Jones, and Brett Moffitt uh, trying to find a way in. You still got, I think, three races left three or four races uh to make their way into the the playoffs there so win and you're in uh there's no doubt about that and um i can't wait to see all this stuff play out but we're going to take a break here when we come back we're going to be talking about let's see here indycar and they were at indy as well and a, a little double header so we'll get into that coming up next Welcome back to Race the Nation. Rob D'Amico, Michelle Rahal. We're talking about IndyCar. And IndyCar is one of those uh, at Indy when they go there, it's a special moment because they yeah. have one, the Indy 500. Obviously, we always watch that on uh, the uh, Memorial Day weekend. It's, a, it's always a great race when you have Cup, IndyCar, and F1 all on the same weekend. But this was a special weekend as well with NASCAR and IndyCar at the same track, running the same track. Uh, just IndyCar on Saturday and Sunday was the cup race. But the guys on on, uh, on Saturday with the IndyCar guys put on another great race. I was, I just love this type of racing. And I even love it with the open wheel stuff better than I do being on ovals. And we've talked about this before in the show. But yeah. um, that's one of those things where I the, these cars, uh, the open wheel cars, seem natural on that type of track, right? Yeah, they are natural. I mean, it is natural. The ovals are not natural for that type of car, at least what they've evolved to. In the early days, you know, when you had Offenhauser and you 
staggered wheels, you know, all of that. It was, it was different. It was just different. Uh, it's evolved. IndyCar has really evolved to more suited to road racing than anything else, you know, but you've got to be able to separate yourself out from Formula One. Yeah. And the only way you can do that is, hey, we run ovals, we run street races, and we run road races. Yeah. So there you go. Hey, did, did you see the – um? they had some of the past winners line up and take their picture on the brick uh, – yard of bricks right there. Oh, why do I keep hitting the wrong picture here today? I'm having a bad time doing that. But you had guys like A.J. Foyt were out there, Jeff Gordon. You had Sam Hornets Jr., Scott Dixon. A.J. was there. Bobby Ray Hall, just name a few of these guys, but they were from all over the place. Uh, and I thought that was wonderful to see, you know, getting these guys together. Mario Andretti was out there and uh, just getting these guys together was just a lot of fun to see um, yeah. these guys out there. And, you know, he's recovered, but further speedy recovery from my cousin, Bob Ray Hall. He had triple bypass surgery and, you know, didn't want anybody to know about it, but, and I understand that, but he seems to be doing fine according to uh, Graham. So they said it was a tough, you know, couple of months there, but uh, you know, that's tough when you have something like triple bypass. I mean, it's hard. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt. Um, yeah. Scary moments. There's anytime you're messing with the heart or hear anything about the heart, you're like, Whoa, yeah, it's time oh, yeah. to take this stuff pretty serious. All yep. right, let's let's look at the results uh, from the race at Indy. It was Alexander Rossi finally getting back to victory lane. I think it's been like over two years or something like that. Kristen Lungard, a second. Will Power, Scott McLaughlin, Joseph Newgarden, Rene, uh, uh, Renus VK. Uh, I almost screwed that one up. <laughs> <laughs> Graham Rahal, Scott Dixon, Felix Rosenquist, and Alex Palou. <laughs> rounding out the top 10 there so congratulations uh to well, rossi uh, got it he inherited it because heard damaged his car oh yeah uh, they were hitting a curb these are delicate cars i mean uh, the indy cars are stronger than f1 but still you run over those curbs man you know he damaged the transmission so yeah. dnf man dnf Erda is a very aggressive driver. Uh, his European counterparts have raced with him. Uh, Lando Norris for McLaren in Formula One has raced him on the same team in the lower formulas. And that, uh, you know, he's got a reputation for being really aggressive, really strong in fast corners. Uh, they have some weird name for him, uh, Hoonigan something, you know. <laughs> Who'd have heard of? I don't know. Something along those lines. Of it. Yeah. So you've had a few of those nicknames. We can't tell them all here on the air, but no. you've had a <laughs> you've had a few. I've those. had a few. <laughs> all right. Let's look at points in IndyCar right now. Uh, Will Power leads them right now. He moves up because Marcus Erickson for for most of the season led the points, and now Will Power moves up. He's starting to come on uh, in all of Penske with Joseph Newgarden sitting there. Then Scott Dixon, Pat, Pat O'Ward, Alex Palou. Uh, we also have Scott McLaughlin. Alexander Rossi moved up into the top 10. Felix Rosenquist and Colton Herter round out the top 10 in points in IndyCar. Uh, so that pretty much wraps up the weekend for IndyCar. Uh, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, open wheel and what's going on with F1. They have, I think coming up, they have their summer, which their summer, summer break, break is what? Is it three weeks or four weeks? It's supposed to be, I think I it's three weeks. weeks. Yeah, uh, three it depends weeks. on what position you hold. Uh, but it's, you can't work on the cars. I mean, it's a whole weird kind of setup. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Cup Series race that happened on Sunday at Indy. It's all coming up next right here on Race Day. Welcome back to Race Day Nation. Rob D'Amico, Michelle Rahal. You can find us on our website, racedaynation.com. You can also uh, go to our social media channels and follow us at Race Day Nation. Appreciate you guys doing it. And don't forget, the show is presented by rhino.co. Sell fast and list for free at Rhino Classifieds. And again, rhino.co. And we're talking about the Cup Series race that just happened at uh, – 
uh, Poke, uh, Pocono. That was last week's where Denny Hamlin got disqualified. But this that. past Sunday was the uh, IndyCar race. Uh, I'm sorry, the NASCAR race at Indy on the road course. I'll get it right. Brain's not working today. <laughs> But uh, they had a, a pretty good race out there. It was Tyler Reddick making some noise out there. Congratulations to him. He did it him. again. Dude, the he guy. It. He's setting himself out as the uh, road course master here. And who gives a damn? He's got two wins. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's he's good at what he does. That's fine. Road course racing helps you in the ovals. It familiarizes you, you with, you know, more of the machinery, how it works, all the different setups. So, yeah, hats off to this kid. Uh, I'm glad to see him moving up. So, remember, the, a couple of weeks ago, they made the announcement that he's moving over to the 2311 Denny Hamlin's team, and it, it's not happening until after 2024, or at, I, I'm sorry, at the end of 2023, going into yeah. 24. But I have a feeling it'll happen at the end of this season. When this is all said and done, he'll be gone. It may and, be. Uh, yeah, but There's a lot of drama going on in NASCAR right now that we haven't seen in the past. It's almost like all of a sudden, every but after the Netflix, you know, drive to survive, everybody got to have a little drama. It's almost as if they're tossing it in on purpose, but <laughs> it isn't. It's just the convergence of circumstance, the tyranny of circumstance. Well, here, here's the thing with him. So he's at a team right now. They know he's out the door. They don't know what's going to happen. Who's going to be in that ride? I think they already have all that ironed out behind the scenes. I think there will be announcements coming out in the next few weeks yeah. that we'll see who's, who's driving what and that he's going to be let go. But listen, these guys are winning. You want, I, I, you know, a lot of people thought, oh, well, now RCR is not going to give him all the stuff. So he didn't give him any secrets yeah. to take over there. And do, but listen, you want somebody to come in that ride that's worth a damn, you better show that they can win in that car. And if they see Tyler doing it, a guy who's on his way out and he's getting wins, why wouldn't I want to go there? They got a winning car sitting there ready to go for you. Yeah. And plus, you know, that's going to help in negotiations on uh, because Richard will be like, uh, you know, I got a great freaking car here. Can you drive? Uh, okay. Uh, let's Not see. Not those <laughs> negotiations are, are already done. Yeah. I mean, they kind of know what they have. They know where they know who he is and yeah. what can he accomplish, you know? Yeah. I think all right. that's all ironed out. So let's take a look at the cup results from Sunday. It was uh, Tyler Reddick, as we mentioned, with the win. Austin Sindrick, who's best finished since his Daytona win back at the beginning of the season. Harrison Burton, young driver up there in the top three. Todd Gilliland, another young driver you don't see up there. Bubba Wallace, uh, top five. And by the way, uh, his third straight top 10 in 2022. And uh, congratulations to him because he hasn't had that consistency as you'd like to see yeah. uh, out of a driver. Joey Logano, who, by the way, I'm going to talk about this for a second, who, by the way, after the race, literally took the checkered flag, drove down the front stretch uh, and stopped the car and had to get out. It was on fire after the checkered flag. Uh, so a really crazy moment for him after the race. Uh, the car caught fire. A.J. Elmendinger, who finished seventh, got out of his car and was pretty exhausted. I really felt bad for him. Michael McDowell, Cole Custer, and Chris Busher round out your top ten. Chase Elliott was running second with two laps to go. Got taken out and punted and all the way to the back. Ross Chastain, who uh, got penalized, a 30-second penalty, was battling for the win there with Reddick at the end of the race on the last lap, but uh, because he took the access path, yeah. uh, like you take turn one, he went past turn one and then took the access road and back on the track, which they said is legal. If you have to, to avoid a wreck and stay out of the grass, you can do that. What they were doing is literally running into turn one and kept going yeah. and didn't even attempt to make the turn. So that's why I think NASCAR said, uh-uh. Nice try. And uh, some of the drivers after the race actually made mention of that saying, hey, listen, that was kind of discussed. Would we use that as an option to go through that first turn if we wanted to? But uh, listen, it didn't didn't obviously work out for Ross. So let's take a look at their playoff picture. Their playoff picture looks like this. Chase Elliott with the four wins would be on top. Ross Chastain second. William Byron, Joey Logano, uh, Tyler Reddick. He moves up with his uh, second win of the season. 
Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, Chase Briscoe, Daniel Suarez, Kurt Busch round out the top 10. 11th is Christopher Bell, Kyle Busch, Alex Bowman, Austin Sendrick, Ryan Blaney, and Martin Tricks Jr. Right now are the two drivers, 15th and 16th in the chase. Or I should say the playoffs, you have Kevin Harvick, who had a really crappy day today. Uh, Eric Almarola, Eric Jones, who re-signed his contract and will be in the 43 car for a few more seasons. And Bubba Wallace now in the top 20 trying to make his way in. Could he get a win to get in? That's what's going to have to happen with some of these guys. Yeah, I mean, other than that, you know, you're looking at the the bottom two, Blaney and uh, not Harvick, uh, Blaney and Truex. They can get in on points, but, you know, they're playing with fire because you got Harvick right there matching. Oh, You know, it's a somebody needs a win. All right, let's take a break here. When we come back, we're going to be talking about sports car racing and IMSA. And wait until you see the new Porsche GT3R. It's gorgeous. Oh, God, I fell in beautiful. love. I fell in love. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back and be right here after this on Race Day Nation. Welcome back to Race Day Nation. Rob D'Amico, Michelle Rahal. And, man, we were talking about that Porsche GT3R. Fantastic, beautiful-looking, sexy. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> For a car. This thing is beautiful. beautiful. Have you seen it online, Michelle? I have. I yeah. mean, all I want to do is drive the thing. It's like, God, I mean, the electronics in it, the screens, the the wheel, everything. The way that you sit in the car and the, the steer, you know, the wheel, the, 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 the controls come to you. I mean, I, I really like that. It just... And Porsche got it right, man. You've got to admit, Porsche got it right. They knew GT3 was going to be the big one where they could go to Le Mans, where they could run IMSA, where they had a world-class car that could run, you know, in any of those series, and GT3 was it. So they had it right. Yeah, They're yeah. ahead of the game right now. I don't know who's going to try to catch up, but we'll see. They'll yeah. hobble it, you know, I mean, with the balance of power. You know, it'll get hobbled, but let's see what it does. Here, but here it is. Man. Look, take look. The crap out of me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> look at this thing. I mean, holy cow, that thing is nice. Can you imagine in 1962 when they came out with the 911 and how much tinier it was than this? How, how they've evolved the car over that many years into what it is now. It's like unbelievable it's just yeah. it's beautiful you know it's funny you mentioned that but it also kept its classic shape i mean yeah when you, you look it at did. a porsche you know that's a porsche 911 yeah you, there's no mistaking it yeah totally and that's what i respect uh um out of them is that that is a timeless car you look at it you know you're looking at a porsche and obviously yeah you, you know they're very different but you do notice that when you see that car, you know exactly what it is. And I give them props for that. All right. Uh, some other news. IMSA is going to be uh, coming back to Indy to race the road course in 2023 and beyond. And they got some special things coming up. And we got uh, John uh, Doonan talking about uh, some of those yep. cool new things they got coming up. Here, let's take a listen. This is a great is a day great for day IMSA, for um, both for our partners who've been – begging to come to this market. It's a great market for activation, so we plan to fill the midway with uh, hopefully all 18 auto manufacturer displays. Uh, our race teams, our manufacturers uh, want to compete here. We have 18 manufacturers in IMSA competition. Uh, we're thrilled uh, to bring the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship uh, to the Sunday of that weekend, the 17th, live on NBC. Um, uh, network television, so we're thrilled with that. Also, our Michelin Pilot Challenge. Uh, we're going to, as Doug said, put a twist on it. They're going to run a four-hour endurance race here on Saturday of that weekend, the 16th, uh, daylight into darkness, uh, in preparation for what we're going to do uh, in the next two years of 24 and 25 and run a long-distance IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship race. I, I think it's great. I uh, love to have those too. cars come back, be on that track, as we mentioned, yeah. being at Indy. Uh, it's just, you know, you should be there. I met Doonan um, 
a number of years ago when he was ahead of Mazda Motorsports, but yeah. I was never happier for the sports car world than when they named him president. Really? That's uh, nice. Of IMSA. Yeah. I mean, smart guy. You picked it up instantly when you were, you know, talking with the guy. You could, you, you, you just picked it up. He had what it, t- it took. Yeah. And they made the right choice. So, you right. know, what can you say except, I mean, look at the Mazda series, the, the Miatas. That was his creation. So he's doing the same thing with IMSA. It's good to see sports car racing coming back. Long overdue. All right, we're going to take a break, come back. I want to talk about what Roger's doing with Indy. Um, and not the series, but the racetrack. It's all coming yeah. up next right here on Race Day Nation. All right, we were talking about Roger Penske and the track, not the series with IndyCar, but Indy as the racetrack. Hi, welcome back to Race Donation. I'm Rob D'Amico alongside Michelle Rahal. The show is presented by rhino.co. Sell fast and list for free at rhino classifieds. Again, that is rhino.co. And uh, we're talking about Roger Penske because what he's done with IndyCar, in the NASCAR event that they had this past weekend, I I absolutely think is great using the track and uh, doing all that. I I, seriously, he, he, his mind. And I, let's say, is it him or is it the people he works for? It doesn't matter. It's getting done under his, you know, leadership, right? He says, this is what I want. Make it, you know, like Picard, make it. So, yeah, you know, and they do. I mean, when you work for the captain, you better perform. Do you like these weekends where they do an IndyCar and a NASCAR race? They'll ne- yeah. next year. Next year they're going to do a NASCAR and IMSA race at Detroit with the street race there, and I think that's going to be a spectacular weekend. No, the combination is is needed. I mean, you you need to draw people to an event. Yeah. People are starved for entertainment, and they they need to be out in society and and moving around in you know in groups and crowds. That we're human beings. We need FaceTime. That's All right. Doing. Now that you mentioned that, we're up against the break. So now you'll be able to get out and go outside and uh, go socialize. Yeah, I'm dying to. Yeah. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to uh, see. Uh, we're going to. It's the end of the show. So we'll see you next week. Yeah. Michelle, where, where can they find you on the uh, internet? They can find me on Facebook at Michelle Rahal. That's M I C H E L E. R-A-H-A-L, and please join me there. And you can find me on Instagram at Michelle Rahal, M-I-C-H-E-L-E-R-A-H-A-L, and the number nine. Yeah, you can also find him at uh, your local post office and on the back of milk cartons. He'll be there as well. (laughs) You can find me at Rob D'Amico, R-O-B-D-A-M-I-C-O. For Michelle Rahal, I'm Rob D'Amico. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week on Race Day Nation.